Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of Code Emporium, where we're going to talk about probability distribution functions. I'm going to split this video into three parts, where we first talk about some intuition, where we'll relate the concept of random variables to probability distribution functions, and also try to take a look at them visually. And then in section two, we're going to talk about more formally and mathematically the definition of probability distribution functions. And then we'll end this video with how they are applied in machine learning to give you a sense of real world application. So let's get to it. All right, so to begin this discussion, let's walk through some experiment. And in this experiment, this involves taking a pen and pencil, going outside to your main street, and then just observing people that walk past you. And for every person that have walked past you, just try to take a note of their hair color and just some eyeball approximation of their height. So for example, if one person starts walking past you, you might say, document them as person number one with black hair and a height of 165 centimeters approximately. And similarly, we might have another person too with brown hair and they might have an average eyeball height of 160 centimeters. And like this, you can document this for, let's say 10 minutes. And this will be one experiment that you've conducted. So congratulations, you conducted an experiment. Now, based on this experiment, we can actually ask ourselves a few questions. And one question that we can ask ourselves, for example, is during the experiment duration, how many people actually walked past us? Now, for the sake of this experiment, let's say that we did see something like 10 people. All right, so the setup is pretty cool. We conducted some real world experiment and we're able to derive some measurable quantity as the outcome of that real world experiment. And this measurable quantity is kind of the value of what we call a random variable. I have an entire video that discusses random variables more in detail, but just note that we're going to denote a random variable here for the number of people that walk past us with the capital X. And in this specific case, X will take on a value of 10. Random variables help quantify the outcome of an experiment. In this case, I saw 10 people, but had I conducted another experiment, I might have seen, I don't know, eight people or seven people or 11 people. And how these numbers behave, like what is the probability of seeing each of these numbers, we can actually represent with a probability distribution function. So let me just draw that out more graphically because that's kind of how we think about these probability distribution functions when we're first introduced to them. So we have an x-axis and a y-axis and for the x-axis, I'm going to put x as the random variable, the, var the values of the random variable, what it can take on. And then we'll call the y-axis some p of x, where p is the probability distribution function over x. And this graph, you know, it might look something like, well, let's say for the value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and five for now, right? So maybe the chance of seeing zero, it might look something like this. Maybe for one, it might be a little more. And for two, we see something like this. For three, four, and five. And let's say beyond that, it's just really low. Like six here, and this can go onwards. So 
What this exactly indicates right now is that this is a graph where the x-axis is a random variable and the y-axis is the probability distribution function. So you can say that the probability distribution function is a function that takes some event or some random variable in this case, x, and then it gives out as an output some probability value which will lie between zero and one. And this axis contains all possible values that x can take. So armed with this intuition right now, let us actually look at a more formal definition of what probability distribution functions actually are. Now before moving forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Coursera. So videos like this are very mathematical and I can't include all the mathematical detail as I would. I talk about how this math is useful in machine learning, but if you do want to know more about the rigorous mathematics itself, I do recommend certain courses on Coursera. So for example, you can check out the Mathematics for Machine Learning course by Imperial College of London, where they have three courses in a specialization they offer. On top of that, you can also check out an advanced statistics course by John Hopkins University. And I'll link all of these in the description down below of really interesting courses that I think are worth it. If you're not interested in just the mathematics and you want to go towards more in the practical machine learning and deep learning space with some integration of mathematics, I have also listed some recommended courses down in the description below. It helps you because you get a seven day free trial with amazing knowledge. And it also helps me because I do get some kickback and it supports me on this channel and helps me make more videos like this. So if you please, do like these videos, please do consider checking out the courses down in the description. I know you won't regret it. And with that, let's get back to the video. All right, so now let's talk about the definition of a probability distribution function. I took this excerpt from, uh, from one of my own blog posts that will be published very soon. So it should be down in the description below. You'll see a link to a Medium article. And I've chosen it to word this definition in this way, where a probability distribution function is a function that maps the event to the probability of occurrence of that event. So there are some new terms here that I will define very shortly, but what's important to note here is that probability distribution functions are functions. So that means that they have an input and an output, and the input is an event, the output is a probability, which is a number between zero and one. So now let's talk about these events here. Before that, I'm gonna introduce some notation. So let's start with a notation called omega. So omega is going to be the outcome of an experiment. And this in our experiment case, well, of like going outside, watching people, and then asking questions. So in our case, the outcome that we first have is, well, 10 people. That's the number of people that we actually saw during this specific experiment. But in reality, like we mentioned before, we, this outcome could have been different. We could have seen nine people, we could have seen two people, we could have seen any number of people. And so I'm going to define now, let's call it capital A, as an event. And this is going to be a set of some possible outcomes. And in this case, let's say that I'm very interested in what is the probability that we would have seen only three people during our um, experiment, right? So in this case, what I can do is I want A here to kind of be representative of like a set of just three people. because this is really all that I'm interested in. And if I wanted to write this out more mathematically, I would say that it's going to be equal to the set of omegas such that x of omega is equal to three. Now, what this means here is that x here was our random variable that indicates the number of people who passed us. So since it's a random variable, it is a function itself. 
So it has an input and an output. The in input is the outcome of our experiment, right? Which is like the number of people that we see. And the output is going to be some number that we can measure and just do mathematics with. So in this case, I'm just interested in three because we want to see the case where what if there were three people that we saw during our experiment? So to repeat, an outcome is the output of an actual complete single experiment of going outside, watching people for 10 minutes, and then taking note of how many people have passed you. An event, on the other hand, is a set of outcomes that you are interested in. This could be a sub, this could be even like a set of total outcomes of all possible number of people that could have passed you, which is one people, two people, three people, four people, and so on. But in this case, I'm specifically interested in just three people, right? And hence I have this formulation. But we could also say, you know, I'm gonna define another event. We'll call it S right over here. This is another event, you can say. And in this event, I am super interested in, let's say, zero people, one person, two people, and so on that may have passed us, right? And mathematically, we could just represent this as the set of all possible outcomes such that the random variable takes on some value in, let's say in this case, the number of people has to be any positive number or integer value. So let's just do this as positive integer value notation, right? So these, this set S is a set of all possible events. Now, again, I'm just doing this for notate, just for, you know, curiosity, but what we are truly interested now, let's go back to our definition, is that we are interested in the probability distribution function, which is a, let's call it P. And this is the function that will map an event. Again, an event is either A or S, let's say A. And this is going to map it to a probability of occurrence. So this is going to be some probability that is going to lie between zero and one. One. Now, typically, because that this is going to be very cumbersome notation, this is technically the probability of this entire piece of information. It's it's going to be like very cumbersome to look at, and it's also not super intuitive what we are kind of trying to say here with the mathematics, right? It looks pretty complicated with all of this stuff. And this is actually where the beauty of random variables comes to play, where instead of just writing all of this, we could essentially just equivalently just say it's P of the random variable being equal to three. Now this notation is so much more interpretable. I know that the random variable X indicates the number of people who passed us. And if this is equal to three, this essentially intuitively says, what is the probability that the number of people who passed us is equal to three? And you can kind of see now, beautiful notation, concise notation, and interpretive notation of how random variables help make this possible. But for the sake of completion, I needed to introduce to you the idea of outcomes and events, and also kind of the complete set of events itself. So I hope all of this is pretty clear right now. And from now in our last section, we are going to look at how we can use this or how this entire notation and probability distribution functions are used in the field of machine learning. Let's now conduct another experiment. And this experiment involves randomly going to Zillow.com and randomly choosing one house listing right? That's our experiment. And we'll conduct this experiment three times. So the first time I did this, I got $677,000. The second case, I got 1.34 million. And the third case, I got 975,000. 
And let's say that the goal now is to build this linear regression model in order to predict the price of a house, probably given some information that we see here, like number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and the square footage. And if we were to write that linear regression equation, it might look something like, well, like this. Y is equal to theta 3x3 plus theta 2x2 plus theta 1x1 plus theta 0 plus some error term. Now, x3, x2, and x1 could represent the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage, respectively. y is the outcome, and then these theta terms are the parameters that we need to estimate in linear regression. Now, one thing to note is that these variables over here, the x's and the y, they are not random variables. These are just normal variables, because the main difference here is that normal variables take on a value that is unknown, random variables can take on a larger set of values, and they are inherently functions. So I hope that distinction is clear. Now, one thing that we're super interested in here in order to find these theta terms is to maximize the probability of seeing the houses that we have actually seen. So for example, we want to maximize, well, the probability of seeing this house and this house and this house. So what we can do here is, well, we can represent each of these house prices as random variables. So for example, we can say, we can let y1 be the random variable that represents the price of the first house that we select, right? Which is here. y2 could then be the random variable that represents the price of the house, of the second house that we select. And y3, could be the random variable of the third house that we select. And what we are interested in now is going to be the probability that y1 is equal to 677,000 and y2 is equal to 1.34 million, which I'm just going to write this in the thousands notation. And then y3 is equal to 975,000. Now we want to basically, we want to maximize this. And what we would want to do is find the values of theta that maximize this equation. So this is a joint probability distribution function. And we want to find the values of theta that maximize this probability of seeing the data that we see. Now this entire technique comes under the concept of maximum likelihood estimation. And I've explained this in greater detail in another video, so please do check that out. But I hope now that you have a good understanding of the theory behind like what probability distribution functions are and also how they can be applied to machine learning. So I hope this makes a ton of sense. Now, there are different types of probability distribution functions depending on the types of random variables that we have. They can be discrete, they can be continuous. And I'm going to create videos uh, explaining exactly how they work out. But for now, this will do it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a ton. I'll have in the description below uh, the Medium article that kind of talks through all of these concepts also in great detail. So please do check it out and follow me on Medium for more amazing content and subscribe on this channel as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.